initially because there is a literature from epidemiological standpoint on, on subjects or human subjects and on animal models that there is some metabolic dysregulation going on with intake of low calorie sweeteners or artificial sweeteners as we call it. So we wanted to figure out is there a mechanism for these findings and the best way we thought we can get to it is first to do some petri dish based studies using human stromal cells or which are essentially a multipotent cell which can differentiate into fat or otherwise and we want expose those cells to a graded dose of sucralose and cultured them for almost two weeks and we found that it actually is upregulating certain genes which are critical for making a cell that is not a fat cell towards a fat cell. At the same time we saw that there are certain genes it's upregulating which seems to be allowing more glucose to enter the cell and at the same time it's upregulating some antioxidants. So the last finding was very interesting and we thought that we have already seen in our high glucose model that high glucose enters into a cell these kind of stem cells and makes it more fat like and also produces more reactive oxygen species. Maybe sucralose is doing something similar. When we took the samples from patients or uh, subjects who had taken sucralose and we took those samples at a year one, year two and we gathered all of them together and looked at the genes, same or similar upregulation that we saw in a petri dish could be now be seen in a human fat samples. Not so much prominent differences were seen in non-obese subjects but in the obese subjects which is what the cell culture was designed to do in a so-called obesinogenic environment. In obese individuals again the same genes were upregulated in a similar fashion upregulating more glucose entry into the cell. Now as you can imagine glucose entry into the cell does not allow it to in an insulin resistant state does not allow the glucose to be utilized. So the glucose is sitting there making it more fat like because it's supposed to store if it cannot burn it and subsequently it's also in causing more reactive oxygen species and glucose would do that so for the first time we actually we think that the sucral is doing so by upregulating and transporting more allowing more glucose to enter the cell and because we have done these in vitro experiments quite a few times and the same results have corroborated in human fat samples, we think that we have actually figured out a mechanism for these findings. So the next steps would be to actually do a, a tagged system to see what happens with sucralose when you tag a glucose in the media and does it truly enter the cell and does it truly enter into a fat droplet so that we can actually instead of having a so-called hypothesis based on our findings we actually can show that look in presence of glucose this is what actually is happening and in, in humans and in, in subjects we need to give them a graded dose to see the same results over a period of time. I would definitely suggest and as I suggest to my patients when they ask me the same question that should I move from a sweetened beverage to a sweet low calorie sweetener um, soda and I said it's actually not going to do you any good because it may still allow glucose to enter and in a state of insulin resistance which most of my obese patients are it's just not going to utilize that glucose and you're going to come back to the same status quo and that's no better than taking glucose containing drinks.